Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dan. Um, today we're going to have a quick look at how I've configured this 15 key stream deck, the original one, um, for LV1. Um, but before we just jump into it, don't forget to click the bottom right hand corner. There's a little icon there, DBA YouTube icon, um, and that will subscribe you to the channel. Um, we've got loads more content coming out, load more uh, LV1 content. Um, so loads more is planned, um, but obviously um, if you uh, click subscribe and, no and turn the notifications on, you'll find out when they're coming out and uh, we'll get into this. So as you can see, this is the Stream Deck home screen and I've set the resolution on the laptop already to 1280 by 768, um, which saves a resizing problem later. Um, Waves has only built the LV1 to work with 1280 by 768 um, currently which kind of really sucks for higher resolution. Um, I normally run this at the max resolution, as I'm sure most of most of you do, um, but we'll get by for this video. So uh, we're on the home screen here of the Stream Deck. So this LV1 icon is a multi-action switch, um, as is the QLab one and the companion one and the multi-rack one. So that opens a program and it switches to the profile that I've made for it. Um, so the other profiles all do the same thing again. Um, so if we switch to it, it'll switch to LV1. So along the top, I've got the home profile, so that just takes us straight back to there, back into LV1. And then I've got the same thing again, multi-action switch, but I've got um, audio MIDI setup, system preferences, LV1, and then the um, Wave SoundGrid driver control panel. Um, so I can press it, that's already open, I can switch back. That's already open. You can see the display settings that I've got. Um, you can't scale the display exactly, but you can get it pretty close. So that's as close as you can get it on a Mac. Um, so they all open open the respective um, thing. Audio mini setup's not actually open at the moment. So I press it, it opens it. There you go, it's open now. It brings it to the foreground. So that's really useful, quick things to just jump around between different programs. Um, you could put Spotify or whatever up there if you wanted to. Um, I've got a play pause here for Spotify or iTunes. It's just the same as the um, F8 key on the Mac. Um, so it's just the multimedia player. And then below that, I've got tap tempo uh, beats per minute. Um, so if you just jump across to the UI settings on here, uh, on mix settings on here, you can see 189 is currently the uh, um, tempo of this project on LV1 of this session and then if I tap that it goes down to 100, 150, 95 etc. So that's um, just using Apple T, Control T, um, nice simple hot, hot key for that uh, on the new version. So this is uh, version 10 um, of LV1. But on the new versions, you've got a little tap temper at the top where the clear solo and talk is. Um, but I'm not on that. Um, so then we've got eight more keys here, um, which we haven't talked about. They are the user-defined keys on the um, console. Um, so on a Yamaha, you kind of get 16. Um, SQ5, you kind of get eight, I think it is. Um, four on a QU. Um, so we've got eight here. Um, then uh, they're a bit more basic than macros on a Digico. They're a bit, they're a bit more like a shortcut rather than multi-action layered button. Um, but in time, hopefully, Waves will uh, clock on. Considering Digigrid has made Digico and Waves together, I'm pretty sure they can uh, share some ideas about macros. Talking to you, Waves, um, that'd be amazing. So yeah, these are just simply the function keys. So you've got F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, 6, 7, and 8, and they map across to the same hotkeys on the um, keyboard of the um, Mac that we're using. So left to right, top to bottom, um, we've got save session. Um, so that saves all the, all the global settings. Um, F2, I haven't actually put anything in there for today, just to show you um, what you could put in there. Um, sometimes I'll put in um, a mix of different things depending on the um, gig that we're at. Um, but you could do load session, for example. Um, you could do an effects hard mute. So if you had a DCA set up for all your effects, you could do that and it would mute that DCA or mute just the delay send is what I would do. Um, and then you've got all your tails. Um, you could do, um, bring your selected aux up, so like sends on fader on a desk, on a QL, you press that and that fader comes 
all your faders change into that um, orc, so you could do that. Um, you could do a hot plug in, which is another one. We're going to look at that on the F6 that I've got at the bottom. Um, I've done that before on the delay. So you just set that up as a delay and you can go through and change the um, feedback of the delay kind of thing on the H delay normally for me. Um, then after that, I've got previous scene and next scene. So you could use that as a um, songs per song. You could change a scene or you could do that per band, depending on how you want to lay it out, how technical you want to be. Um, after that, I've got save scenes. So I've got store session, save session and store scene or save scene. Um, next to that, I've got um, previous and next channels. So that allows me on, let's just jump to this channel, um, to, to use um, the uh, console without um, an X touch or anything. I've got an X touch here that we're just going to have a quick look at. Um, but that allows you to quickly jump across to a channel um, and change the uh, level that's going to it. Um, and then lastly, I've got F6 mast on the master bus. Um, so this is a hot plugin. Um, so we'll just quickly jump to that. So that will load up my left right channel. So I've got Subaline, which is currently bypassed. Um, F6 is the RTA version. Vitamin and then SSL comp. The Vitamin and SSL are both just using a mastering plugin. And the F6 has no um, EQ added to it at the moment. The idea of this is it allows you to quickly get to an EQ. So if you've got a bit of feedback in the room or you don't know where it's coming from, but something's ringing, you want to quickly jump to something. So I've uh, enabled it to always jump to rack two on the left, right master bus, um, which is where I've put my F6. And then you could just jump into here and notch out wherever it is. So that's all the, pl all the um, keys on the stream deck. So I've designed this stream deck to be used with a laptop, um, just with a mouse or the trackpad, the laptop and the stream deck. So it's kind of negating using the X touch or anything else that we've got a touch screen exam for example, which you could obviously jump straight in and do all this kind of stuff on. So yeah, the X, X touch has got user to find keys on it. It's also got mute, gr uh, mute groups, which is this uh, pink layer. So I've got drums, mute group, band mute group, um, vocal mute group, um, and then I've got a few others that are spare, four, five, six, seven, and then I've got um, effects, and then you've got solo clear and stuff and tap and stuff. And obviously using these faders is preferable. So I kind of want to take this system out, um, Stream Deck, Server, and um, DigiGrid D, and a um, IOX um, 1206, 1208, um, with a small band and kind of just use it with the MacBook Pro. Um, I want to in. I, w I do want to buy a NUC or an Axis One and um, put that into the uh, mix so I can free up my Mac. Um, but for a super small show, which is kind of what we're looking at today, I'm thinking of Stream Deck, MacBook, um, server, and I/O, and that will be all the control, no touch screen, no faders. So that's kind of what this is set up for. So I hope that makes sense. Hope that's useful for you. Um, so this is super portable rig. Obviously, you can throw a MacBook and a Stream Deck in your rucksack. Take one for you case, which has got uh, all your I/O and stuff in. Um, let me know what you use on your user-defined keys as well. That'd be super inter interesting to know. So I've got these F these function keys which you've just seen. But let me know what you use um, and how you integrate the Stream Deck into your LV1 system. Um, or whether you haven't even thought about doing that, maybe you've got one and it's just doing other stuff, or maybe you haven't even got one. Um, uh, it'd be great if Waves could like integrate OSC or JavaScript or Apple Script, um, like the QL and CLs have, the Yamaha ones, uh, integration into the uh, LV1 platform. And uh, obviously better display resolutions, more resolution options would be great, uh, 2021 onwards. It'd be great if we could make more use of Companion and not have uh, similar issues to my, um, uh, what's it called, my QLab file that we kind of had a look at in the previous video, um, where if I haven't got LV1 on top and I press um, F1, it doesn't do something strange um, that we're not uh, expecting it to. Um, obviously, to use Companion, currently you have to use like an OSC to MIDI uh, mapper um, to use it for LV1. I'm going to have a look into that. I'm going to hopefully suss it out, work out how to use it perfectly, 
and then I'll do a video on that when I've worked it out and made it work, um, doing at least all that it does today, otherwise there's no point. I mean, I've heard good things about um, Osculator from Mac OS, um, so I'll have a look into that, and it kind of does all the OSC to MIDI work for you. Um, I think that's like £12 to uh, buy as an app now, um, and then there's um, Bio MIDI Translator is another one we're going to look into. Um, so there's a couple of options there, I'm going to have a look into them, um, depending on how long we're on quarantine for. I mean, ideally I want to have a QLab file um, where you've pressed spacebar on the song, um, and that will fire the stereo track of the song, the click track of the song, and the video of the song. And it also changes the desk, um, so that will change the desk scene and the tempo for the um, delays. Um, so I mean, that's the goal, that's what I'm aiming towards. Hopefully I can do it all. I don't know, I'm not going to lie. It's all a bit of an experiment, but I'm having good fun trying it. Um, as ever, it's a pleasure to have you here with me. Um, don't forget to hit that little DBA YouTube icon in the bottom right hand corner um, to subscribe to this channel. Um, that also will uh, keep you up to date with what I'm doing and hopefully how I get on in these uh, um, projects I've kind of set myself. Um, it also really helps to boost my visibility um, to other channels by liking this video. Um, it means the YouTube algorithm shares it to other playlists. Um, but yeah, thank you for stopping by. Uh, I'm Dan. I'll see you again in another video. Cheers, guys. Bye.